now begin talking about our next segment for the day, which is emotional infidelity. And uh, joining me to discuss this is Benjamin Zulu, who's a clinical psychologist. Karibu sana to the show. Asante sana. Yes. Really nice to meet you. Um, so, Benjamin, we first need to define exactly what in emotional infidelity is. A lot of us, of course, know the word infidelity. We sort of live in that age where everybody's readers is are up. Watu wako chonjo. But in a sense, we've always understood infidelity to be a physical act. Correct. Um, but we're talking about emotional infidelity mm -hmm. today. So what is that? Uh, when you talk about emotional infidelity, Jesse, we are talking about inappropriate attachment to another person other than the one you're in a committed relationship with. Mm. Uh, let's break that down to say, if a person is attached emotionally to another person apart from the one they're in a committed relationship with, that's what we are calling infidelity. Infidelity is unfaithfulness. Yeah. Getting emotional fulfillment, emotional, somebody to feed you emotionally, to meet your needs emotionally, other than the one you're in a, you're in a relationship with. Usually there is no sex involved, yeah. but it's an attachment. It's cheating. Yes. Like there is unfaithfulness. It yeah, it's unfaithfulness. Yes. yes. You're cheating on your partner. As much as it's not physical, if you, you know, that's the person you think about, that's the person you run to when Very things good. are thick. We right. are coming to the signs. Yeah. Um, Actually, yeah, let's talk about that, the signs. The signs. Mm -hmm. um, you know that you're in an emotional um, affair. affair with another person when you, we are going to talk about the stages of how they, they develop, but let's talk about the signs. When you realize that you're talking to this person in secrecy, you don't tell your partner about it. Mm. When you realize that you have to text good morning and good night to them. Yeah. And you you feel anxious when they don't text you. Hey. <laughs> hey. And you look forward to meeting them. Uh -huh. And you reorganize your schedules, your plans to meet them. Mm -hmm. And you can hardly focus when they are around you. <laughs> and there are gifts involved between the two of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there is chemistry <laughs> going on between the two of you yeah and those that collection usually mm. it's the same collection that happens in a healthy relationship mm. it's just without the physical yes the same collection of a feeling of specialness you feel like they understand you in a special way you feel energized in their presence you talk about personal things with them and one telltale sign is when you talk trash about your partner with this to person to that person Ooh. yes if you talk trash about your partner with this other person, that's one of the telltale signs. There's another subtle form of emotional affair where you actually praise your partner to justify oh. as though you're just a friend to this couple. Oh, it's, it's to justify. In the stages of uh, in development of emotional affair, the first stage is innocent friendship. <laughs> I think you're going to scare a lot of people here today, but it's an important conversation to have. Mm -hmm. So, innocent? Friends, that's stage one. That's what we're telling ourselves. We're just friends. Many people whom you end up having emotional affairs with, when you started, it was not on your mind. Right. You just had a good click. It's a person you understood each other with. From workplace, from somewhere, but you just have a flow. You click. Mm -hmm. And let's justify this, Joyce. Having good connection with people is not bad. Right. You need Absolutely. chemistry with the people to have good conversations, to have a working relationship, yeah. to have Business, flow. Business, everything. That is right. important. Absolutely. What we are talking about here is emotional affair is when the friendship has crossed the, the line. Mm. The friendships that cross the line are the ones we are discussing today. Mm -hmm. You are having many good friendships out there with the people, but they are within boundaries. Mm. That's very healthy. They don't need to be hidden. Your partner knows about them. Or they don't need to know, but there's nothing, uh, you know, about it that is inappropriate. Mm -hmm. So stage one is innocent friendship. The next stage is infatuation. Infatuation. You feel especially understood by this person. Mm -hmm. they, understood, they understand your thoughts. They understand your feelings in a special way. You feel so good and empowered when you're in their presence. that You enjoy the flirting atmosphere. Yeah. 
by the way and that is such a huge thing yes and i'm sure a lot of our audience members can relate to this because a lot of women in in married relationships say this a lot unfortunately they're like you know this person he just understands me my husband doesn't understand me but this other person he really understands me if that is your experience please do sms us double two triple nine as we continue talking with benjamin zulu um and we we sort of tell ourselves that yes. there's no harm in that right at that point we have moved from innocent friendship mm. This is the first time you shall tell that your partner is getting attached to somebody. They come up a lot in his conversations. Wow. A person who's having an influence on you will keep up showing up in your thoughts, in your yeah. illustrations, in your points. You know, so and so says, I think so and so says this, I was in so and so, I remember so and so say That name that keeps coming up is a sign of influence. It's mm. not a sign of something negative. Mm. It's just a sign of influence. Mm -hmm. This person is having an influence on you. It's a good connection. But where does it cross the line? Infatuation means it's having now a sexual connotation, mm. an emotional angle to it. Stage three is need for secrecy. When you now need to keep it hidden. Isomais, <laughs> what's up with our navy? Now, kita kaku mu text, unatoka bedroom, wendo kamu text. Amo na mutumia pesa na delete messages. Una chat na una delete. Uh -huh. you, you even change, some people change passwords or they, they, they delete conversations so ama simu ikipi wana step out akachukwe. Mm. Ama ana change body language akachukwe. Hata kama uziki chenye nongea but you can see ame change body language akiongea na your phone. Yeah. Need for secrecy. If you have to hide what you're communicating with a person, probably now you've already crossed the line. Wow. But we are going to notify especially Christians, they must not mistake secrecy with uh, honesty and openness. That may be a topic for another another day. We're not saying you keep everything you're doing open. Mm. That is not healthy. But we're saying if you need to hide what you're communicating with a particular person, probably it has already crossed the line. Mm. Now, stage four is called emotional dependency. We moved from innocent friendship right. to infatuation. Yeah. Now we have we have come to secrecy, need for secrecy. Mm -hmm. Now emotional dependency. Okay. When you need whatever happens in your life, that's the person you need to talk to. In your ups and downs of life, the tensions at your workplace, mm. the frustrations you're going through. Before even your spouse. If that's the person you need to meet, to talk to, to your heart. that's emotional dependency. Where? Like you're cheating. And now at this point, the significance of your spouse begins to decrease. Yeah. The intimacy, the closeness you used to have with your spouse is decreasing. You begin to see more flaws in your spouse and more glorified image of your newfound love, mm. quote unquote. Mm. This friend, this person who, what happens? I'm, I must help brothers. <laughs> it's a boy I'm new in this married uh, group. Okay. I'm my third week of marriage. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, I hope, I hope. <laughs> we are still in that honeymoon phase and I was told that it's full of uh, flam but I was told to make the fire as high as possible. Yes, keep so your that honeymoon if the flames go. <laughs> work towards that. Uh -huh. But what, what, what you need to understand is from psychology, the psychology of the grass is greener on the other side right, syndrome right, right. is this. Should you go along with this person? Because after stage four of emotional dependency, the next stage is usually physical, emotional, sexual relationship now. Mm -hmm. By stage four, there's sexual tension growing between the two of you. Mm -hmm. That time, you're even insinuating, talking about sex ab mm -hmm. between the two of you. Mm -hmm. Indirectly. Yeah. It's gone from flirting about, I went in Rembo to yes. now even other things. Yes. Yeah. Those times you greet each other, now there's prolonged hugs. <laughs> You Five look minutes. forward to it, yes. <laughs> you know, and those caressing, yes. all those things. Yes, uh -huh. and you, if you drive to work together, some people it begin as innocently as just drive, giving each other a lift or something. Now those drives become special. <laughs> <laughs> something you look forward to, and if the person doesn't show up, something happens. You feel disappointed and yeah, hurt, let down. Now there is emotional dependency. So the next stage usually sexual now. Yeah, and when we say sexual, there can be many other activities in sexual apart from the traditional one. Yeah. The, the, you can have people can get sexual involved uh, involved sexually without the, the traditional kind of sex sure, that can physical yes intimacy, yes scientific. what we are t w w so um we are saying if you want to know you yourself you are involved is getting to know i was warning people brothers those of us and sisters mm. even in a committed relationship can be marriage or just a relationship mm -hmm. i want you to remember this when you first met your person you're you, you relating with they also looked as glorified as this person this is sure. just a face sure. should you go all the way 
and conclude this relationship in a sexual way, you soon begin to see flaws again mm. in this person. You just repeat the same cycle yes. until the next person. You just need to know that it's a principle, it's a pattern. And another thing, if you're suffering a frustration in your relationship, be very careful now because you are more vulnerable. Hey. If you are especially unhappy in your marriage or relationship, there's something called rebound. You're looking for relief somewhere. Remember this, your need can exaggerate the goodness of this person. That's true. Because you are so needy, this person looks so angelic because the other person is hurting you maybe. Mm. Later on you come to see, although that person used to criticize you, this one is complimenting you, praising you, seeing the good things in you. <laughs> now you get <laughs> attracted. <laughs> yes. Akona strength yule mungine hana. If you stay with this one long enough, utaona weakness zake pia. Yeah. Ambazo zita kufrustrate pia. Na kutane na mungine watatu, ambaye hana hizo weakness zikona huyu. Mm. And the pattern continues. Okay, Nobody so. is perfect, only that they are different. Right. And because you needed relief emotionally, this person looked like an angel. So remember this, when you are needy, you can exaggerate the goodness of a person. I want you to talk about that because you're saying it's really on the person because if you're saying you will literally jump from one relationship to another, which is why, in fact, they are what we call serial cheaters, yes. right? Yes. You're doing the same thing from one woman to another woman or one man to another man. You're just repeating the same cycle. Talk to us about the psychology of that person. Considering in our last conversation just today, we were talking about time and seasons. Yes. That in relationships, in life, difficulty happen right and so maybe if a person is that insecure or hasn't figured out themselves and how to address challenges in their lives Correct. you your psychology then something is something is not working the way it should you're because right. then you're always hopping around looking for the next thing yes so you 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 have this front of being machismo that you have all these women but really it's a weakness it is and we need to warn People like, especially the married, if you are both in a relationship and I, I am in a relationship, but you're going through a tough time and I provide a listening ear to you, and then my also tough time you provide a listening ear to me, that alone can create a chemistry that brings yes. an attachment. Yeah. And then soon we don't realize that. I feel like you understand me better, you understand me better. I wish I had met you before I married this yes, person. Yes. Oh, me too, I feel the same, and all that. What you are calling serial is this. It's a person who doesn't understand seasons. When you are down in your relationship, and then you met this person, you felt like this person was better. It goes in a spiral. Mm. This thing doesn't work. Usually it doesn't last long. Three to five percent of emotional affairs conclude in a stable relation. Only three to five percent. So 95 Only. percent. So here you are, this person, oh, Sidri, he talks, you don't talk to me like this other person. He treats me so well. So you think you found heaven. <laughs> Kumbe only it's only three a to season five of your life that needed relief. Right. And this person provided relief. When you are very hungry, wow. any kind of food is sweet. <laughs> True. <laughs> because of so hungry you are, your taste buds will exaggerate. <laughs> <laughs> a food will never be eaten on your normal day. Ataka wa nchura. Yes. Ukiwa na njaa sana, chakula chote ni kitamu. When you're emotionally needy, any, any person, a few we have, we have liked a person during a season in our life, only to look at them next year, you're wondering, what was I seeing? <laughs> Hopefully you're not saying that about whoever you've married. <laughs> <laughs> because you're so sad. <laughs> Most of our exes now look at them, you're yes. wondering. Yes, but they are So, so it's, it, it's the same psychology. Yeah. Just remember this. That person was meeting a need in your life. Or at the phase you are in, you yes. needed something they have. If you are coming from a family where your father is very violent and unstable, then you meet a kind guy who gives you attention, who listens to you. You, you think he's angelic. He's everything. Until later you realize he's boring. He has no new <laughs> ideas. can take you out. Yule, yule. <laughs> <laughs> or you come from a father who's very diplomatic and kind and takes you around. You, you begin to think it's a little bit flat. Mm. Then you meet a guy who just wants to know where you are, cause you are, yeah. checks on you, shows up by surprise everywhere. You think he's <laughs> surprising and romantic. Later to realize he's controlling, yes. insecure, yeah. can't give you freedom. So it's about the opposite where you're coming from. So what we're calling serial <laughs> cheating may not be a weak person, may not be a wicked person. Can yeah, just be a weak person, ignorant. Yeah. Yeah. The difference between wicked is because this person deliberately evil. Yeah. A weak person is just ignorant. Yes. Don't know where they are in life. They are not aware of seasons of life. So even if today I get a down season in my marriage, I'll be aware of that. Because that time I'm needy, I can find another person very exciting. And mm. I'll be aware at the back of my mind. It's Soon I, I carry this along to go to the same place with my wife. Absolutely. I better go back and cultivate my garden. Hey. Where? Anyway.
uh, this is Relationship Tuesday on Full Circle with Joyce, uh, chatting here with Benjamin Zulu, who's a clinical psychologist. A fascinating conversation we're having here on emotional infidelity. And um, guys, uh, let me just read something here. You know, there's a U.S. study that was done showing that um, while findings showed that 15% of married women and 25% of married men had sexual affairs, it was also revealed that an additional 20% of married couples have been impacted by emotional infidelity. So that number is high up there. And given what you're saying about the correlation between when you've passed certain stages of um of emotional infidelity, you're likely to end up into physical infidelity. Yes. You can see the correlation within those numbers right there. But then someone else would say that traditionally the workplace has provided the most sort of commonplace for extramarital. You affairs. spend more time with your colleagues than with your spouse. Yes. Yeah. Eight hours of the, of the waking time yeah. you are with, only the few hours of morning and evening you are with your spouse. It's all practical. Benjamin, we're going to take a break. Okay. But when we come back, uh, I have some comments coming in. I'm going to be reading those out again. The SMS line is double two triple nine. You can also reach us on our social media platforms. That's at Switch TV Kenya on Facebook. Uh, more with Benjamin Zulu when we get back. This is Full Circle with Joyce. guys so welcome back to full circle with joyce again my name is joyce amundi bahiga and i'm joined by benjamin zulu who is a clinical psychologist we are talking about relationships today particularly emotional infidelity in relationships and if you've just joined us by the miss. but let me just give you a quick recap just before the break we were talking about how the workplace is really sort of like <laughs> ripe ground for a lot of these uh, extramarital affairs to take place largely because that's where you spend a lot of your time right but just to recap to know whether you or your partner are cheating emotionally some of the things are that you share personal thoughts or stories with someone of the opposite sex or that person you feel a greater emotional intimacy with him or her you start comparing him or her to your spouse and list even to them why your spouse is not meeting all your needs um, you long for and look forward to your next conversation you start changing your normal routine uh, you fantasize about spending time with them and you spend significant time alone with them together. Wow, Benjamin, thank you so much for all of the insights that you've shared. I want to turn to some of the feedback that we're getting from our audience members. And this is on Facebook. Here are some of your comments. Be Chabet Aguas, you say loving the conversation. Benjamin Zulu taking notes. Um, good job, Joyce and Wondia Sante Sana. Uh, Vivian Melissa, you say you're tuned in and you're loving the topic of the day. Daniela Leon, you say you're watching the show and following step by step. <laughs> uh, Justice Muli Masaku, good morning, Joyce and Benjamin. Thanks for the talk to me. I have been in that situation, um, living my girlfriend and see other girls. Um, someone here says, Benjamin, he is talking the truth when you are angry, when you are, I guess he meant hang, huh? when you are? When you are hungry, sorry, there's a typo there. When you are hungry, you can eat any food. <laughs> I think that will be the tweet of the day. Matom <laughs> Wendwa, yeah. um, you were talking about uh, that you also fall out of normal communication patterns. Um, Alfie, Alfred, you say you're watching um, from, I believe, Keio, and you're saying you're following the program step by step. Uh, Hudson Siringi Amesama, he's camped there taking notes and loving the show. Wero Paul as well as Ante Sana for watching um, the show. Um, so, uh, Benjamin, as we continue, maybe you can just sort of highlight for us um, how then to begin cutting that cord before we get to the rest of the SMSs? How do we then begin detaching ourselves from this situation? Because as you've said, this is something that has simadiani mekwekichemka for a long time. By the time you've started with it, it was just friendship, then sijimara infatuation. infatuation. 
need for all those steps. Dependency. That is a that is it's taken and a while to build that. the next is sex. Yeah. The next part is coming is sexual involvement. So how do you break that when you're already so far One along? principle we must understand, Joyce. Once you cross a line, it's easier to cross it again and again. True. And once I cross a line with you, it will be difficult to take you back and tell you, hey, I think we were crossing the line. Let's go back to... <laughs> <laughs> so, number one, because of that principle, sacrifices, there is a sacrifice to be made if mm -hmm. you have to break an emotional infidelity, emotional affair. Mm -hmm. There is a sacrifice to be made. Forget about, uh, you know, clean. I, I don't want to hurt this person. Mm. You're going to have to hurt somebody. Either the person you're in an affair with or your spouse or your, the person, your partner. Yeah. One of them must be hurt. Hey. So, sitaki kuumiza hui ni rafiki yangu, ni memujua siku nyingi. I don't want them to be hurt. With you, with the drop from them, from them, they'll be hurt. Or you can just continue with the relationship and hurt your partner. Hurt your relationship. Mm. So, you must make a choice who needs to be sacrificed. So principle one is, because you have crossed the line, you must, it's easier now to uh, cross it over and over again. Number two, decide wh what to sacrifice. So number one is, after you decide that my relationship, I value it more than this emotional affair, mm. you must now pull back towards your relationship. Mm. Minimize the time and the calls and the texts. Sometimes uh, men have found it like uh, some people have, got, have done counseling with, have found it necessary to block the person temporarily, mm. to block them. <laughs> you know what, speaking of blocking, <laughs> anyway, speaking of blocking, there's, yes. an, there's, a, there's a comment here. Hey, I have a problem with my first stages of relationship. I'm excited, but when we continue, I become bored with it and I end up blocking my partner. <laughs> Oh, blocking the one you've got into a relationship yeah. with. Okay. We are going to discuss more. This person could be bored by a relationship at a later stage because they are unconsciously afraid of commitment. Commitment mm. looks like it's confining for them. There are people who just want the, the adventure of newness, of new relationships, right, right. new people, right. the icing of a relationship. Wow. And yet the deeper insight uh, looks like it's confining for them. So they could be unconsciously afraid of commitment. Okay. Yeah. Another question here. Hey, Full Circle with Joyce. What if my partner is a snob? He really has no time for me. I wish I were his friend. Is he the one possibly in infidelity somewhere? That's Joanne watching from Kiambu. Yeah, if somebody has no time for you, we say that's the first sign. If, you, if their emotional attention, they look distracted. They don't find you fascinating anymore. Mm -hmm. Where, when you got into a relationship, how were things? How are things? How are things changed? The first sign that they are emo they're emotionally in an affair is when they are not available for you emotionally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another SMS here. Uh, someone says, "Hi Joyce, I have been suffering from emotional infidelity. My neighbor is good looking, and I have been flirting with him." To a point, I stalk him somehow. I always peep through the door and see when he is going into his house, who he's talking to, and how he's dressed. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. This a person who is also in a relationship. Yeah, maybe or yeah. maybe not. But okay. Yeah. She doesn't say if she's already So in the stage is now infatuation. We said in, oh, in infatuation yeah. you find this person very fascinating. Mm. But it's like what they're talking about is not mutual. Mm -hmm. That other person is not as uh, interest, uh, has not noticed this lady as much. Mm. What I can help that lady realize is you need to know what need this person is meeting in your life. It could be a need for love. Need for attention. Or a person who, who meets your, you know, Mr. Right or the perfect person and all that. The right. image you wanted the most. Yeah. You need to realize that this person might not be, their character might not be as good as how they look. Sure. When you finally get to know them, even if you are to get into a relationship with them, realize that when we like people, we fantasize them and glorify them and magnify their goodnesses. Mm. So although it could be, you can pursue the relationship if it's possible, but you also need to remind you, even if you succeeded to get into a relationship with them, there are things in them that you will not like. Absolutely. Yeah. Someone else says, Joyce, my husband tells me he is the man. He calls ladies in my presence anatumiwa thighs, breasts, and I'm breastfeeding, but I feel empty and wasted. That's so hurting. Let's tell this kind of people that in a relationship you get what you permit. How to know whether you are in a relationship affair is if the lady did that to the man, how would he be? Right. Now, Akisema, I am the man. Does it say that being the man, I'm entitled to, to wander outside? Yeah. 
to to get to emotional whatever those kind of sexual from other women and I'm not so this lady is to draw her boundaries I think those, we stay in relationships that are abusive because we have come to believe that we can't survive with this person mm. and we think by just cooperating everything we are winning love you'll be surprised but if this lady was to stand for her ground the man might cha might change but I think she's afraid of standing up and losing him right and she's in such a vulnerable place I mean she's this, the, I, I advise her to get professional help Okay. And if you'd like more conversation, we'll, I'll give my contacts later. But even on Facebook, I'm Zulu Benjamin. Okay. If you if you inbox me uh, or get a professional help, talk to a person. You need th that th that thing will continue and become more hurtful for her if okay. she doesn't stand up now and do something. Let me just ask you one last question, and I really hope you can answer it very briefly because our time is yeah. far gone. But uh, someone here says it's so frustrating to have a spouse who is ignorant and unappreciative. Infidelity is consoling. Like, oh. so they're embracing infidelity because of an ignorant or unappreciative You're right. spouse, not even a boyfriend or girlfriend. Right. Um, what would you say to someone like that? Because ask obviously you, we, we, we talk a lot about the sanctity of marriage. Ask yourself about the future of this relationship that you find boring. Ask yourself about the long-term solution. Whether that affair, the infidelity, is yeah. meeting you in the long term. Or you're getting entangled in other things that will just complicate your life further. Okay. Infidelity can satisfy you for now, but in the long term, will it? Nothing. Hey, Benjamin, it was such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for Thank this you. conversation today. Um, very quickly, give us your how people can reach you as we get ready to play this next song by Samantha Ann and Avio Kuita. My email is ZuluBenjamin at gmail. ZuluBenjamin at gmail.com. Facebook, ZuluBenjamin. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'll have time for this, so I'm just going to wrap up the show here as we uh, release you guys with the song. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for all of your feedback today. Thank you for being a part of the show. It's been a wonderful time. And if you've missed it, be sure to catch the repeat at 3 p.m. and on the Switch TV website and on YouTube. With that said, I'm going to get out of here. Here's Samantha Ann with the song Anavio Kuita. Until tomorrow, would you have yourselves a wonderful day? God bless you. I'll see you then. Ciao. Shayako, eh, eh, kwa maisha yako.